Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we'll examine the evolution of elephants and look at the fossil record of the proboscidea, including mammoths and mastodons. Near the end of the video, I want you to be able to distinguish the difference between proboscidean teeth and their function in the different diets of mastodons and mammoths. Proboscideans are members of the Alpha Theria, and their fossil record begins on the African continent with a small fossil found in the Paleocene of Morocco called Erytherium. As a basal member of this group, Erytherium retains a very bunodont dentition, which means that it has low, robust cusps, but still can be recognized as having a tribosphenic molar pattern although it shows some affinities to being more lophodont or loafed shaped than uh, contemporary mammals of the Paleocene. The eyes were also more anterior on the skull, but little is known of the skeleton. The next fossil is the remarkable Meritherium, which is known from Egypt. Um, I had the pleasure of accompanying the late paleontologist uh, Owen Simons to Egypt about 15 years ago. And I remember watching in amazement when he discovered and excavated just this beautiful skull of Meritherium in the deserts around Fayum. Now we know a great deal more about Meritherium than Eritherium. Meritherium is known from the Eocene, uh, from multiple well-preserved skeletons, and it was an aquatic mammal with large tusks, which are formed from the incisors. So both the uh, lower and upper uh, tusks were developed by the Eocene, but the trunk or the long nose that we see in modern elephants was still pretty rudimentary. The body was elongate with a more numerous vertebral number and a very open rib cage. Its toes were very splayed. This allowed it to swim in the shallow waters around the Tethys Sea, uh, which covered much of the Middle East during the Eocene. Now the animal also kind of resembles sea cows, but does not have the specialized teeth or the postcrania of modern sea cows. Although there is a close molecular DNA similarity between elephants and Sirenia, the sea cow group suggesting a origin near the Paleocene and Eocene. And um, fossil sea cows start to appear in the fossil record in marine sediments in the Eocene epoch, and they're known in the Atlantic and later Pacific Oceans. It was during the Oligocene that the first fossils appeared, which exhibit a larger trunk and bigger tusks, the Paleomastodon, which shows a a retracted nasal, which in life would have facilitated a longer trunk. Now this fossil was also fairly large with a terrestrial adapted body plan and gravipodial stance. Now it's found in the Middle East and it appears to have crossed into Europe and Asia as the Tethys Seaway was closed off during the Oligocene. But the most amazing of the early elephants was Gompotherium. Now this creature featured extremely long tusks and a larger body, which was about the size of a medium to small modern elephant. Gompotherium moved out of Africa, crossing into Asia, moving across Europe and into North America during the Miocene. Now its success was also very long lasting and it is one of the longest mammalian genera, genera lineages because it stuck around all the way until the Pliocene. During the Miocene, there was an explosion of diversity within the group with really bizarre forms. One of my favorites are the Platyabeliodon or shovel tusks. These creatures look like Gompotherium, but had flattened their lower uh, tusks into shovel-like teeth. Now, no one knows exactly what these shovel-like teeth were used for, 
but they are known from uh, North America and Asia during the Miocene. One of the largest and scariest looking proboscideans is the fearsome Dinotherium, which had the lower uh, tusks pointing downward and lacked upper tusks. They have strangely shaped skulls with a reduced trunk, and they're known from the Miocene to Pleistocene in Africa, Europe, and Asia, but for some reason did not come across into North America. Now we come to the two most iconic fossil mammals, the mastodon and the mammoth, both near survivors into the modern day, and they lived alongside humans, which means that our own species interacted and hunted both of these creatures. Mammut, the scientific name for the mastodon, was smaller, about a medium to small sized elephant, but it had a hair covered body and a unique set of teeth that are unlike modern elephants and mammoths. The molars feature large loafs or rows of cusps on the teeth. These loafy teeth likely were used for browsing vegetation and the study of their dung um, show that they had a wide diet of plants, including hazelnuts and gourds and grapes and willow and ash leaves and cypress. They were effective browsers and likely lived in more densely vegetated regions. Mammutheus, or the woolly mammoths, lived at the same time, but their teeth resemble modern elephant teeth and are flat grinding surfaces with ridges of cementum and enamel that makes them uh, more effective for chewing uh, grass. Now the diet of woolly mammoths consisted of grasses, similar to modern elephants living today in Africa and Asia. Woolly mammoths were larger and they likely lived in more open habitats on the Great Plains and the Siberian steppes. But both groups are found throughout North America from specimens near the North Pole to ones down near the Mexican border. Now both mastodons and mammoths, despite their different diets, lived kind of roughly in the same geographic region across all of North America. These two maps show the occurrences of each genera across North America from the faunal map uh, database of Pleistocene occurrences. Notice how both groups lived in areas that are tropical, like Florida, and deserts like Arizona, and mountains like Colorado. So these animals were highly successful in North America, and they only went extinct with the arrival of humans around 10,000 years ago, with some remnants uh, hanging on in the high Arctic until around 6,000 years ago. Next time you go for a drive, look out the window and imagine mastodons and mammoths in the trees or fields that you drive past. In a geological instant into the past, these creatures ruled North America, Europe, and Asia. Their bones are continually found across the Northern Hemisphere and their disappearance is one of the saddest fates of the planet. It's really weird to imagine how much can change when you think about mammoths and mastodons living in your neighborhood just a few thousand years ago. Here in Utah, fossil remains of mastodons and mammoths are known along the Wasatch Front near Salt Lake City, near Price, and down south near St. George as well as on the shores of Bear Lake. All right, you should be able to distinguish the differences between mastodon and mammoth teeth and their function in processing different diets. All right, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's uh, geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashburger.org. Links are found in the description below.